Hello everyone and welcome back to New Horizons. So of course in the last episode we set up all the machines here for Platinum, Iridium, Osmium, Palladium, Ruthenium, Rhodium and... and... oh I don't know what else. <laughs> there are so many dusts here, this is a very long and complex chain. So yeah, we're making all of those dusts except for Palladium. It's set up here ready to go, it's, except we're missing the input for it, at least one of the inputs. And that input is palladium metallic powder dust, which we can get from ores on tier 3 planets. And that means the tier 3 rocket. However, this episode we're going to be doing a series of improvements. We have some things to take care of before we can look at the next tier of rocket, although we're not too far away. And so the first thing we start with is some base expansion. It's important that we have enough space to place the machines we need. So I used the filler and expanded the green room. Sticking with the same theme that we've established, I think it works very well in these types of rooms. And as you can see, we now have an extra chunk of space on here. I reckon there's going to be a lot more expansion to these types of rooms. And we also gave more or less the same treatment to the orange room here, which also now has an extra chunk of space. And so the first thing to fill that space was an electrolyzer, which went inside the green room. It's the same GT++ multi-block electrolyzer that we've seen before. And this thing fits nicely next to the epoxy setup. Some of the passive setups here for the single blocks. It works well here in the wall. And this electrolyzes 1,2-dimethylbenzene, which we are making over here in this distillation tower. This is the area that makes us regular benzene. But one of the byproducts of that is 1,2-dimethylbenzene. And that of course can be electrolyzed one bucket at a time for 10 buckets of hydrogen. And some extra carbon. We had quite a lot of 1,2-dimethylbenzene backlogged, but not enough hydrogen. It seems that is now in reverse, so we now have way more hydrogen than we know what to do with. And if we can find the 1,2-dimethylbenzene tank, which I think is over here... Oh, we actually ha still have a decent amount. Aha, so that is going to help us out tremendously moving forward. And I also decided to move over some legacy setups, the first of which being the distillation tower for distilled water. And that is now in the yellow room inside chemistry. Over here. Pretty much the exact same setup as the as, as we had before. This turns regular water from a reservoir hatch back here into distilled water, which is given its own tank in fluid storage. I think it's that one. I want to make sure. Yeah, it's that one. <laughs> and it's full. And distilled water is used to make, I believe it's charged Certus Quartz. I found when making the Platinum line, I was running out of this quite a lot, and I had to make it manually, so I wanted to fix that. It's made, of course, in the chemical reactor. And our chemical reactor over here has seen some upgrades, mainly just with the addition of some extra patterns and recipes in here. One of which, the Cubit Wafer, is very, very exciting. We'll get onto this shortly. However, there's also been some other additions here in the orange room. I know, more machines. More, more machines. Oh yeah, we now have ourselves an autoclave, a chemical bath, a compressor, all of which of course have some dual interfaces underneath. So first of all, the autoclave was crafted because I wanted to upgrade our power situation down here. Currently, we have five large gas turbines burning benzene. And short of adding any more turbines, which will happen eventually, the next best thing is to upgrade power storage, which is in that battery buffer up there. And that was certainly not cheap. I think I ended up requesting over 130 circuits, HV circuits. <laughs> so that prompted some other upgrades here to the orange room. Mainly just extra patterns and so on to be able to handle all the different recipes. So yeah, right now we have it almost full of batteries here, or of energy orbs. We're still missing six though. Oh yeah, and one crafted already, so we're missing five. I wonder if we can get the extra five. We can. Look at that. Oh yeah. Yeah, the autoclave is used to make these raw Lapatron chips, which is molten vibrant alloy and Lapatron dust. But this of course is something that we can handle by now. Look at all these resources, this is getting crazy. And of course it takes platinum, which isn't really an issue for us at this point. We have around 1700 and we've used a few hundred at least. Yeah, let's fill in this extra orb in here. And hopefully we can get the rest of these by the end of the episode. Well, they're, they're crafting, of course we can. Alright, so moving swiftly onwards, of course one of the things that we get from the Platinum line is Iridium. And while it has its uses in dust form, we were also going to have to cook the ingots. And to do that, we had to upgrade the blast furnaces. 
So being very, very careful, we do not cause an explosion. We, we converted the blast furnace, one of the blast furnaces and the vacuum freezer to IV power, which is a requirement along with TPV coils, although we have HSSG, which is the tier above. And with that, we cooked up a full stack of iridium, some of which is already gone by now. In fact, it was turned into rods for you're going to hate this. And that brings us on to our next objective today, the IV circuit assembling machine. In fact, we have already crafted it. It should be right down here. But this is an IV machine, right? And inside the clean room, we only have EV power. In fact, not even. I think we're transforming up to EV. Yeah, the power situation under here is kind of a mess. We're still using gas turbines and batteries. A very primitive way of sending power over here. So let's fix that, shall we? All right, approximately five hours later, it's done. Don't worry, this didn't take five hours. We'd have had a change of plan though. We've got a series of transformers, which takes power from the main battery buffer. I debated a lot on the best route for this cable, but ultimately I think it works well here in the corner. It's by no means perfect, but it certainly works. It joins this main catwalk here, goes to the center, and then down this wiring tunnel, and then down to the battery buffer. And speaking of the battery buffer, we actually filled the battery buffer with 16 IV Lapidronic Energy Orbs, 100 million EU storage each. That is a lot of EU storage, and that also means a lot of benzene. But one issue at a time here, back to the circuit assembler, which you'll notice here is actually absent from the clean room. Isn't that the whole reason we tried to rewire this thing? <laughs> well, besides uh, cleaning up some of the spaghetti underneath, as I mentioned, we did have a bit of a change of plan. So it was during the live stream that chat suggested we put the circuit assembler inside a processing array. And I think that was a really good idea in the end. For some reason, we got the quest when we crafted the machine, even though this is not our first processing array. But yeah, pretty standard stuff. And this is also where the base expansion comes in. So it's now sitting in the orange room over here. So we've done this for two reasons. The first is that we can eventually add more IV circuit assemblers for faster circuit crafting. And the second is we don't have to deal with IV power in the clean room over there. <laughs> it's a little easier to do it inside the processing array. You might remember for a lot of the circuit assembler recipes, it has to be inside a clean room. Almost everything, with a few exceptions like the open computers parts. That is actually no longer necessary if you have it inside a processing array. But yeah, because it's an IV machine, we're given it EV power, double EV energy hatch, since we can't quite afford the IV one yet. And yeah, of course, we give it dual interface capability for fluids for the soldering alloy. And as you can see here, we've also moved over most of the circuit recipes. And if you guys have really been paying attention, then you might notice some new recipes in here. <laughs> Mainly the quantum processor. Oh yeah, and this thing, the nano processor mainframe. So we're going to have to come back to the circuit overview screen, which has gotten a lot bigger since the last time we've... <laughs> I think in the new update, they added some new circuits and therefore this thing no longer fits on the same page. So if we look at the EV circuit, we were using the nano processor assembly before. We can now actually afford the cheapest EV circuit, which is the quantum processor. And I just now actually realized we can upgrade the elite nano computer, which is IV, into the quantum processor assembly. So remember, the further to the right hand side you go, the cheaper the circuits get to produce. And the further down, the higher the tier. So we want to be on the bottom right as much as we can. So other than the requirement of the IV circuit assembler to make the quantum processor and also platinum, the other thing which we could not produce before was the qubits, which comes from qubit wafers, which comes from indium gallium phosphide. Aha, and also radon.
All right, so over here in the yellow room in chemistry, we have ourselves two more large chemical reactors and an electrolyzer. Pretty simple stuff, honestly. It's all things we've seen before. However, we were kind of smart about this. Kind of. <laughs> and uh, things are going to start to tie together. So before I explain what I mean by that, what are we doing here? Well, we're making indium concentrate. And that is sent from output hatch into input hatch into the next chemical reactor. And this makes us our indium dust. We also get a lead zinc solution byproduct, which we can electrolyze for some lead, some silver, some zinc and sulfur. The electrolyzer, of course, being here. We also get some water, which we're just sending into a trash can underneath. So yeah, the indium is sent back into the AE system. I believe this is the output bus right here, back into an interface. And we also have a stocking input bus. So to make indium concentrate, we need purified sphalerite, purified galena and sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid we are already making over here. And if you guys have seen the ore processing episode, which was quite a while ago by now, all the way back when we set up these machines here, we in fact explicitly set an output filter here for purified sphalerite and purified galena. There it is. <laughs> I believe we have actually run out of sphalerite by now. Yeah, we're down to two left. I did think ahead on that as well, though. <laughs> you guys are going to see what I mean by that at the end of the episode. There's so much to tie together here. I don't know how to explain this easily, but uh, I hope I'm doing a good enough job. You guys are following along, right? You guys know what's, what's up. <laughs> uh, sometimes you guys are paying attention more than me. And um, maybe you've also spotted the fact that we passed a million aluminium dust, which is also important since that is another one of the inputs here for indium. We combine the indium concentrate with aluminium dust and that gives us the indium dust. So besides the fact that we have to fix sphalerite, now that we have our indium dust, we were able to set some mixer recipes. We can mix indium dust, gallium dust and phosphorus dust for indium gallium phosphide and then send that through a large chemical reactor with some wafers and radon for the qubits. And this we can cut down and use in the quantum processors. And in fact, we're already a couple of steps ahead here since we've We've made our first 40 quantum processors. <laughs> and we have these on Autocraft, of course. In fact, we should make sure to get the quest for this, which we're kind of missing here. So we need to pick up the qubit wafers, which again we have on Autocraft. The qubit processing units, I believe, are made in the cotton machine. Yeah. And the only cotton machines we have right now is this one. Actually, these two. Pretty soon we're going to make the clean room obsolete and we're just going to switch it over to a multi block which originally was going to be here, but this has kind of uh, been occupied now with a few other machines. One of which being the chemical bath, which I mentioned earlier in the episode. And this is used for quantum stars. Before we get too ahead of ourselves here, this is a uh, nether stars plus radon. The radon we make over here in this LCR, very old LCR, which still needs to be moved over. So far though, I've just moved over the radon that we have and it's been given its own fluid tank in main fluid storage. So we have a storage bus on the back, we can use this for auto-crafting, both for the quantum star and also for the qubit wafers. Again, we'll have to set up some dedicated radon production, but for now we're just going to use the backlog that we have. And by now the qubits should have finished crafting. Yeah, this should be our quest. Not quite, it looks like we're missing three for the quest. We can request some more though. Well that is going to take a second or two, but in the meantime, speaking of the quests, also during the livestream we picked up a few more quests. More than a few. Oh yeah, that was very sad. It was quite tedious to do that, but uh, <laughs> it was actually very satisfying. And all of those quests over here in the IV chapter knocks out a decent amount of the of the quests here in IV. And crucially, a lot of these things, not this one, this is some chemist coins. Again, more chemist coins. Again, more chemist coins. More chemist coins and technician coins. I'm not sure there's a a decent use for these, but yes, this is what we're looking for, the IV loot bags. Whenever we get a choice like this, I'm definitely going to pick the IV bags. Yeah, after claiming everything, we got seven IV bags, one of which is already enchanted, but we'll have to enchant the rest. And all of these quests here were basically just hold a couple of cells of each of the intermediate steps in the plotline. Again, it took a little while, but we, we got there in the end. What is this, an osmium round? We don't need this. And an ancient gold coin. I don't think we can do much with this, right? Yeah, just smelt it down into gold. 
these things we're going to save for the end of the episode. We have to actually make the motors to enchant them. I don't think we can afford this just yet. We're going to have to do some more crafting. By now though, the cubits should have finished and this should be our quest. There we go. That's also the quest for the quantum processors. Again, we have 40 crafted. Well, 41 crafted. And there's a very specific reason for that. So we upgraded power storage here, right? And I mentioned that was going to be a lot of benzene. And whenever these turbines are running, we cannot keep up with the demand, which means that we have to add some more distillation towers. And we are going to add 12 more distillation towers to be exact, which equals 40 quantum processors. I wanted the cheapest version of the EV circuit before I crafted these things. So we should have all the stuff here for 12, 11. Oh wait, yeah, of course, it's... it's <laughs> It's four each, I wasn't even thinking about this. Uh, originally it was going to be 10, now it's 12. So I guess we're going to need to make a few more. Let's make another 16. We can manage this, right? Oopsie. <laughs> yeah, threefold in maths does not work out very well. However, during the live stream, we did actually prep all the stuff for it. So uh, I believe most of the other stuff should be here. But yeah, it's pretty much just going to be an expansion to what we have. We need to take the wood tar that we make from the coke ovens and send it through some extra distillation towers. And this in the third slot gives us some more benzene and that should keep up with the supply of the demand for benzene from the gas turbines. But yeah, I think we should have more or less everything that we need once those circuits finish crafting. Actually, before I forget, we can also pick up the quest here for the sensors for you're gonna hate this. We get an extra IV bag for the circuit assembling machine at IV. One more IV bag. For the cubit wafer, another IV bag. <laughs> For the quantum processor, another IV bag. And then the quantum processor assembly. There's also our Indium quest. Yeah, we can add a recipe for this, the cheaper IV circuit. And this thing will actually replace the array, which we should have in this dual interface. So both of these are IV circuits, but this one is cheaper to make. So we're gonna make, we're gonna make use of this quantum processor assembly. Alright, let's see if we got enough casings for this. It was somewhere north of 3,000 stainless steel, <laughs> which is uh, not doing too good for our supplies. I think we only had around 2,000 yesterday, and we smelted quite a lot during the live stream. A lot of it is still in the blast furnace. Oh, we had one. One to spare, look at that. <laughs> Don't you just love when that happens? But yeah, check it out. We've got ourselves 12 extra distillation towers here, and this is, of course, going to give us lots and lots of phenol and toluene and benzene, crucially. 1,2-dimethyl benzene. A lot of the stuff we've actually been voiding for quite a while, we'll have to set up processing for creosote oil. And is this one of the things that you can turn into methane? Or is it just lubricant? I noticed a few days ago we were actually out of methane, so we're gonna have to do something about that. Fortunately, methane isn't too difficult to come by. 
Uh, but something that is difficult to come by in this base is AE channels. We had to do uh, a bit of shenanigans under here to make it all work. But it's uh, kind of impossible when you're working with this ginormous cable everywhere. And uh, yeah, I had to actually add a second transformer from the green line. Since the original one here used all 16 amps that comes out of the transformer. And that did not include this uh, set of distillation towers, so we had to kind of wrap it around. Oh yeah, and we're capped on channels on the original P2P. We're not going to look down there though. That's what... <laughs> that is what the wiring tunnels are for. But yeah, these should be set up. The actual ratio for distillation towers to two EV coke ovens is 14. And we have 16 distillation towers. The reason I crafted two extra was for symmetry. And that was also why we were short on some circuits. But yeah, there's actually one more thing we need to get this to work. And that is the wireless receivers which have now finished crafting, perfect. And these things will be used to control the distillation towers to make sure we don't overproduce benzene. So again, we're gonna use machine controllers on all of the distillation towers, pointing into the maintenance hatches. And then we can double check which frequency we're using, 575. Frequency 575 should match up to the one on the benzene tank. And whenever it's below seven million, it sends a redstone signal to the distillation towers to turn on and make more benzene. So all we have to do is add the receiver onto the maintenance hatch to point into the machine controller. Redstone on, machine on, safe mode. And this will be analog mode and 575. And it should have turned off, right? Or I guess it's below the threshold. These are also on. Yeah, let me set the receiver for all of these things. There's going to be a lot of clicks. <laughs> this was already a lot of clicks for all these P2Ps here. All these things lighting up at once uh, kind of hits the FPS a little bit. I don't know if you might have noticed. That is a lot of distillation towers turning on at once. <laughs> Probably not the best for the game. We might have to add some extra redstone control uh, and make it like an RS latch so that it's not constantly blinking the machines. Um, I might have to look into that actually. You know, the turbines are currently on to fill the battery buffer. We're going to have a couple of minutes here just to double check and see if the benzene is able to keep up, because previously the, the tank would drop whenever the turbines were on. Let's see if that is the case now. The threshold is 7 million here, right? So, I mean, from the looks of things, it seems to be able to hold its own, right? It's, it's pretty much locked on 7 million. Give or take a couple of thousand, because it, those, uh, those turbines do drink a lot of fuel. I don't know what the exact number is here, but we can get a pretty good idea looking at the numbers on this tank. It looks good though, right? I mean, we are, we're pretty solid for benzene. And a couple of you guys suggested the multi-block battery. That is something we're still going to look into because uh, these Lapitronic energy orbs can be upgraded at a later stage into the Lapitronic energy capacitor. Lapitronic super capacitor, this thing. Awesome, so I want to try to get a lot of these loot bags opened and hope for the best with the ender chest. I have given a new super tank for advanced glue. This is going to be a very similar situation to radon. For the time being, we're just going to hook it up to our AE system and use what we have, which really isn't too much. That is even more LCRs that we're going to have to add. However, advanced glue is used to make graphene from graphite, along with some wafers and yeah, the advanced glue here. This goes inside an assembling machine. Uh, we need a circuit one and dual. Uh, yeah, we can slot it right here. And graphene dust can be sent through the wire mill for graphene wires, and this can allow us to make the motors at IV. All right, so it seems that we have here 11 unenchanted bags and the one enchanted already from the quest. Let's get the rest of these things enchanted. I just made up some fortune books right there. Yeah, we have 13 here. All right, game, please. <laughs> Surely in 12 bags we can get, yeah, we have a clean inventory right here. All right, are we ready? Let's do this. Oh, <gasps> first bag. The first one. <laughs> Wait, we got two sets. We got four. We actually got our ender chests. Oh my goodness, look at this. 
Wow, that's crazy good. That's awesome. <laughs> oh my goodness, nice. And we got some Samarian batteries. This is probably the best loot bag opening we've ever had. That is some insane luck right there. Some A sensor, some more of the motor cost, heavy duty alloy, some circuits at various tiers. That's a lot of EV circuits right there. Oh, and we got LUV circuits. Wait, those, those are... Those are the ones that we encoded, right? Hold on. Circuit assembler. Yeah, this is the other one, the nano processor mainframe. I think we encoded it, but we didn't craft it yet. But uh, I guess that gave us our quest. I wonder if that can give us... Yeah, it's one of the last ones in EV here. And oh yeah, this is just an EV loot bag. Let's just open this. Bone meal. <laughs> our luck has run out. Oh nice, and we even got an ender pouch. Wow, that is insane. I cannot believe we just got these. That is sweet. I'm happy. <laughs> Alright, so I'm not sure how many of you guys have seen the update video. I released a few days ago by now, actually. And first of all, I want to say thank you so much for all of your support on that video. That that got an insane amount of comments. And I totally did not, did not expect that. But uh, yeah, truly, you guys are the best. And you help me just as much as I help you. Anyways, during that video, uh, we took a little trip to Deimos, I believe it was. We should wait till daytime. Yeah, we went to Deimos, one of Mars's moons. Uh, should be over here somewhere. Or was it Phobos? No, it was Deimos. It was the lighter of the two planets, I think. I'm pretty sure it was here. <laughs> and our multi-block miner should be here. And can you guys guess what we were mining? Or what I went for? You'll probably guess. <laughs> but this is where things all start to tie together here. That was actually an excellent bounce right there. Alright, let's grab the rocket. Find our miner, which should be here somewhere. I think I have waypoints turned off, but I should have set a waypoint. Yeah, over here. There it is. It should be finished. It's been many, many, many hours since I set this thing up. However, inside of here, we should see a significant chunk of... Sphalerite. Oh yeah, there it is. <laughs> Sphalerite for all of the indium for the circuits. And there's a, there's actually quite a lot of stuff in here. Yeah, it, it tossed up the mining pipe, which means it's finished. Oh yeah, look at this. That's three chests, four chests... Five chests, look at all this electrotine. Six chests, more uranium. Uranium is made to make, or is used to make radon. Seven chests, so look at all this copper. Eight chests? Eight chests. <laughs> Eight and a half chests, I think. Seven and a half chests, or yeah, seven and some change. So we have used a lot of resources recently, and we want to keep the resources flowing, right? So from now on, we're going to, instead of using all these compressed chests, we can use the ender chest and just send it straight back to our base. Hey, give me that. The question is, do we want to keep this here or uh, should we place it somewhere else? As for the ores we can find on Deimos, there's uh, quite a lot of useful stuff here, actually. I don't know if it's exactly stuff that we need, though. I mean, we need everything, right? But uh, there's things we want to prioritize since we still only have the one miner for now. Although that is due to change here pretty soon. Alright, so I went ahead and collected the miner. I still get kind of nervous on other planets. Even though <laughs> even though we have the Spectre Dimension, it still takes a while to get there. And I have had a few close calls while playing this game. Uh, you can never be too careful. And if we get trapped, I mean, if we die here without a rocket, then we're basically screwed, right? <laughs> like, it, it's basically game over at that point. And I always get paranoid about leaving things behind, but uh, I believe we picked up all the all the chests here. Rocket should have fuel as well. We are go for a launch. Oh yeah. This is still so cool. The fact that they managed to get this done in Minecraft. I mean, it's, it's simple, it's basic, but I love it. <laughs> and we're going to be doing a lot more of it in the future here. Let's head back to the overworld. And yeah, I think for an intermediate step, we're going to place the miner back here. I believe it's going to be on a manganese vein specifically. 
On the other hand though, we are kind of a little short on certain quartz, and we could do with a lot of this for the upcoming controller rewire for applied energistics. Basically all the components take some form of certain quartz, so I think I might actually go place it on a certain quartz vein. Either in the nether or on Mars has a few certain quartz veins. However, that is something I'm going to do between episodes here. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. This was a jam-packed episode. <laughs> we got so much done. We got so much done today, but there's still so much left to do. For the moment, we're going to start processing down all these resources. One chest at a time, but of course we have to upgrade our processing because there's still still a good amount of bottlenecks in this. Mainly this, this processing array here for the macerators. Yeah, we've got a lot left to do, but for now, that is going to be all for today. I want to thank you guys so much for watching and your patience on this series. I appreciate all of your support, and I hope to see you all in the next episode of New Horizons. Take care, everyone.